Hey y'all, if you're returning to my channel, welcome back. And if you're new, as always, welcome aboard. Is there some kind of rule that says if I have to go out and fill my car up with gas that it has to be pouring rain outside? Like it hasn't rained in weeks. We've needed rain and it hasn't rained in forever. And now it's raining and it's raining when I have to get gas. Of course it is. Anyway, so that's what I'm gonna talk about today is the rain because we all know that when you go to Florida in the summertime, it rains pretty much every day and it's especially bad in the summer because I don't know why but in the summer you just have those random afternoon thunderstorms that just last for like an hour or two so what should you do when it's raining when you go to Walt Disney World I'm gonna kind of break this up into a couple of different ideas here because my brain works in strange ways so I always say that if it is raining when you get up and you're like you've you've planned to go to a park if you have the option obviously this is coming from the perspective of you've got a couple of extra days like you don't have four days and you're doing four parks like if you've got a couple of days that you're not doing a park I would make one of the rainy days an off day so if you wake up and it's pouring rain at 6 30 in the morning it's probably going to continue to rain now if you have looked at the weather forecast and it looks like the weather's gonna clear up fine go to the parks cool but in my opinion for me, when I wake up in the morning and it's already raining, that's a day that I'm like, you know what? Let's go hang out at Disney Springs. Let's go to the outlet malls. Let's sleep in and see if maybe it clears up later today. That's one of those days that I'm gonna maybe not go to a park if it's already raining when I get up. Now, what to do when it starts raining when you're in the park? Cause that's gonna happen. You're gonna go into a ride, you know, you go into the Haunted Mansion and it's bright and sunny and beautiful and you come out and it's pouring rain and it's disgusting and there's no end in sight. So what do you do at that point? A lot of people are gonna choose to just leave, you know, and that's always an option. You can go home, take a nap, you know, hang out at your hotel, recuperate, go get some lunch somewhere, whatever. But I'm gonna be talking about my options for what you should do if you plan on staying in the park. And I'm gonna give you my favorite park to be in when it's raining. Like if you decide, you know what, we only have one day per park, we don't have extra days that we can do nothing, um, we, we can't skip a day, we have to go to a park, which one should it be? And then I'm gonna also tell you if you are stuck in a rainstorm in each park, what, you, what area you should go to to be able to kind of take advantage of the most things while also kind of sort of staying dry-ish. So my park that if I'm going to a park and it's raining, like I'm going to the park no matter what, the park that I want to be in is Epcot. And a lot of people probably disagree with me because Epcot's huge and Epcot is all outdoors basically. Um, the main focus of Epcot is the World Showcase which you have to walk around and it's outside. But the pavilions are pretty close together. And if you go to the World Showcase, you can duck into a pavilion you can go and do some stuff, do some shopping, get some food, see the, you know, if there's a show at that pavilion, you can go and do that. And when you come out, maybe it stopped raining, maybe it hasn't. If it hasn't, you dart really quickly to the next pavilion and you do the same thing. And you just do that over and over and over. And you're just having like little spurts where you, you may get wet. You could hold off and see like, oh, it's gonna, it's gonna slow up a little bit. Maybe we can dart right now. Uh, but for the most part, you're gonna be able to stay kind of dry, especially if you got your ye old Disney poncho. So if you've got your poncho, your raincoat, your umbrella, you're not gonna get that wet. And there's very little space between a lot of things to do. So that's why I like to go to Epcot. A lot of people probably would say that they'd rather be at Magic Kingdom because there's a lot more stuff at Magic Kingdom, meaning more rides, more actual attractions. And that's true. Uh, so if that's something that you're, you wanna do, enjoy. But for me, what I find to be the most fun, and obviously this is gonna be more for adults. You know, if you've got little guys, they're not gonna be super interested in the show in France. So maybe Magic Kingdom is better for that. But as an adult who goes to Disney and thoroughly enjoys the heck out of it, I prefer to be in Epcot, even though I don't drink alcohol, so it's not even that. It's not even that I can drink while it's raining. Um, you can just, there's a lot of stuff to do in the pavilions. And I mean, in Future World too, but mainly World Showcase, that's where I like to be when it's raining. So now if you just happen to get stuck in the middle of the wonderful afternoon thunderstorms of Florida and you are in Magic Kingdom, where should you go to be able to kind of take advantage of the most stuff? I always go to Tomorrowland when it's raining because most of those attractions are indoors, excluding the Tomorrowland Speedway, which if you missed last week's video, link that little guy up there, uh, you can see why I'm not going to that even when it's sunny outside. But 
everything else is indoors and the lines are indoors the actual rides are indoors they're not going to be shut down because of weather except for the astro orbiter which obviously will be shut down because of the rain which also check out that little eye um so you can do space mountain you can do buzz lightyear you can do uh you can go meet stitch now instead of doing stitch's great escape you can do the monsters inc live floor and my personal favorite thing to do during the rain is just get on the people mover just go get on the people mover and just keep going around just keep going around until the rain stops. It's awesome. It's so good. You can stay dry. You can see some stuff. And you're sitting down. So, lots of stuff to do in Tomorrowland. So, that's where I like to go if I'm caught in the rain in Magic Kingdom. And if you're caught in the rain at Animal Kingdom. That one's kind of rough because Animal Kingdom, like Epcot, is mostly outside. So, my pick for where you should go in the rain in Animal Kingdom is Festival of the Lion King. I know that a lot of people probably are thinking, well, that's at the very back of the park. Why would you want to go all the way back there? You're sequestered. The Lion King show is awesome. It's my favorite show at Animal Kingdom, so maybe you weren't going to get to do it, and now you do because it's raining, so yay. So go do the Festival of Lion King. There's also a Tusker House right there. You can go and grab some food. There's there's like little stands around there, too, if you don't have reservations. Um, but, you know, you can get some food, and also there's a back entrance into Pandora, the world of Avatar, and it's right over behind the Festival of the Lion King. So, just head down that little walkway, and you can go into Pandora, so if you want to go to Satuli Canteen and get some food, or if you want to go and stand in a line for one of the attractions in Pandora, you can do that too, which hopefully the line would be sort of indoors. I think a lot of the line for Navi River Journey is inside, and a good bit of the line for Flight of Passage is inside too, as long as you are not in extended queue outside. So. Those are some options for, you know, if you still want to be doing stuff, you can go and you can be getting in lines for those things. When a lot of people may leave because it's raining and we're not going to stay in the park when it's raining, maybe you can get a little head, head start on them and, and head over there and actually get to do some stuff in Pandora. Hollywood Studios is tiny. Now that's unfortunate. So I'm not entirely sure where you should go in Hollywood Studios. For me, I picked two places actually. Um, one option is if you can go and get in line for Toy Story uh, Midway Mania, go and do that and then One Man's Dream or Walt Disney Presents, whatever it's called now. Um, those two things are pretty close together and that'll take up a good bit of time, especially if the line for Toy Story is pretty long. And so that's that's some good stuff and you can, you can kind of meander around and you can be inside and you're not going to be getting rained on. The other option that I kind of like is to go over to the launch bay and do all the Star Wars stuff. Because you can stand in line you can meet all kinds of characters in there and you can um, see all the Star Wars art and you can see the little show about the behind the scenes stuff on Star Wars. And there's a whole bunch of stuff in there to do if you really like Star Wars. If you're not super into the whole Star Wars thing and you don't really care about meeting Chewie or whatever, uh, then I'd say go over and do Toy Story Midway Mania and then you can get in, you know, go into Walt Disney Presents and you can see some of the history of Walt Disney. And I've mentioned before that that's one of my favorite things to do at Hollywood Studios anyway. It's something that you should definitely do and maybe you would skip by on a normal regular day that's not uh, like this. And finally, Epcot, I mentioned that I want to be in the World Showcase, but if you are in Future World, you don't want to have to be like walking all the way out to the World Showcase just to get there and then walk through the stuff because that's a hot mess and you don't want to be that wet. So if you're in Future World, go to the land. And I love the land because that's where Living with the Land is. So you can do Living with the Land, you can do Soarin', there's food in there, so you can really take up a good bit of time and, and still be doing stuff and you never have to go outside if you're in the land. So, you know, you can do a couple of attractions and get food without ever walking outside a door. So that's another really good option for if you're just stuck for, you know, an hour or two with the, with the weather, what you should do at Epcot. So that's my tips for what to do on a rainy day when you're at Disney World. Obviously, the rain can kind of put a damper on things, but it doesn't have to You don't, if you don't let it. So go out there and, oh, the rain's picking up again. Listen to that. That's fun. Uh, go out there. Really enjoy your time at Walt Disney World. And if you have any suggestions on places that you like to go when it's raining or things that you like to do outside the parks, if there's a, just a fully rainy day and you're not going into the parks, what do you do? Let me know down below, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, y'all.